Welcome again to Cottage Talk. I am Russ Goldman. This is my match reaction show. My five takeaways from Fulham's 2-1 to loss to Liverpool at Anfield in the first leg of the Carabao Cup semifinal. Down a goal, but far from out, and I'll be sharing that in the next 15 minutes. As always, please do subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. It does help other Fulham supporters find us. Okay, let's get to it. Before I go through my five takeaways and my man of the match, I just want to mention this. So I have been looking forward to this match for a while now, and I wasn't disappointed by the quality of play. Both sides had players out, no excuses. It was a very good match to watch. I don't want to hear the excuses from the Liverpool supporters, the players that were out, because I can make the same argument of the players that were out for Fulham were significant in a Wobi, and then, of course, Calvin Bassey. Those were significant losses. I know Salah's a significant loss for Liverpool along with the injuries that they have, but let's just push that aside and let's just talk about the football that we watched. And honestly, I want to give a lot of credit to Marco Silva, his coach and staff, and the players for executing his game plan at Anfield. Now, if you look at it, and I haven't watched Liverpool all year, but I think that they would be hard-pressed to have an opponent that really matched up better with them than Fulham having two matches. Now, obviously, they won't have only played one match against an opponent pretty much at Anfield this season, but Fulham have given Liverpool all kinds of trouble at Anfield. They really have. They've made it difficult on them. Yes, Liverpool were better in the second half. Yes, they had two substitutes that changed the match. But Fulham dictated how this match was going to go by the way they played, their shape. It was fantastic for the majority of the match. So I want to give them credit for the way that they approached this. Now, they didn't approach this in a negative manner. They approached this in a tactical manner that they were going to try to beat Liverpool on the break, and they had their opportunities. It just didn't fall for them. Missed opportunities, which is one of my takeaways. But you know what? I'm proud of this club. I'm proud of the players. I'm proud of everyone because they gave themselves a chance, a very good chance in this second leg to get to Wembley. I truly believe that, and I'll be sharing that in this show. Okay, let's get to my number five, and let's start with this. And this one I think is an obvious one. Fulham deserved to be in the lead for the amount of time they were in the match. Okay, they deserve to be in the lead. And it really went, I believe, all the way to, I want to say about the 66th minute, they were still ahead here. And they deserved to be ahead. Very good goal from William. As we've seen in many matches with Fulham, they do start off a little slow. Once they get into the flow of the match, then things start to happen. And they were dangerous when they were on the break. They had this opportunity. And full credit to, I want to say it was, Pereira and Raul for getting this opportunity for William to put it in the back of the net and put Fulham ahead. And then I'm thinking, okay, we've got something now. We got a goal. And we I was hoping that they would build on that, but we have the goal. And then the play from the rest of the half, again, how much did Liverpool really bother Fulham attacking wise? Not so much. Fulham really were dictating how that first half was going. Full credit to them. So they deserve to go in the half up a goal. They absolutely did. Unfortunately, they probably should have gone up by more than that. They had a wonderful opportunity from Bobby Decadovery, but his first touch was bad. This is in the first half to possibly give them a 2-0 lead. And then, of course, you have in the second half a couple of opportunities. And yes, again, Bobby Decadovery, I think, made a mistake here. He takes a shot and... The goalkeeper, Kelleher, makes what I think is a routine save where I think the play was to pass the ball. And he did not pass the ball to Andres Pereira, who I think was in a better situation than himself. And that was the disappointing part of this. But they deserve to be in the lead. And then, of course, Liverpool make the substitutions. They get the two goals. But before they get the two goals, Fulham deserved to be where they were. It just didn't end up where we would all want them to be, at least level. They're down a goal. But like I mentioned already, they're far from out. 
That's going to go to number four, which piggybacks off of number five. The missed opportunities to make a 2-0 came back to bite Fulman in this match. Like I mentioned, I'm talking about the situations with Bobby Decker, Dover, but there were other situations as well. And when you're at Anfield, you have to capitalize on these opportunities. They did not. They absolutely did not. And that leads to a couple of situations, a deflection and, and uh, a very good goal by Gakbo. But that's what happens when you do not capitalize on, on these situations. So instead of going back to Craven Cottage at 2-2, we're talking down 2-1. to one. So that definitely affects them. It, it does. Because I truly believe, based on the entire match, that Fulham deserved to go back level to Craven Cottage. But that's not how it works. Okay? And like I said, I, I want to give credit to Liverpool because they did enough to get those two goals. And But you know what? They didn't get a third. And that might come back to bite Liverpool. So we could talk about that in a future episode because – only being two to one, they might feel comfortable. I wouldn't feel comfortable if I was Jurgen Klopp, the players, and the Liverpool supporters, because I think Fulham have a very good chance to get to Wembley. I, I truly believe that, and that'll, that'll be one of my takeaways coming up. But those missed opportunities definitely hurt Fulham, so I, I just want to share that as my number four. Number three, and this involves Andres Pereira, and it is this. Andres Pereira's play acting was embarrassing in this match. Now, I am not one that likes play acting, diving, call it simulation, whatever you want to call it. I hate it. And I'm going to call out Fulham players when they do it. Bobby Decadova redived a few matches ago. Andres Pereira does the play acting to try to get a yellow card from Virgil van Dijk, and it works. So am I supposed to be happy that he cheated to get a yellow card? No, I'm not happy about that. I don't like cheaters. This is cheating to me. I actually was listening to a show after the match. I actually called into it on Sirius XM FC. It's called Winalda Talks Football. And I was speaking to Eric Winalda. And Eric Winalda, formerly of the U.S. men's national team, basically did his entire show about Andres Pereira and his play acting. He was that upset about it. Took away from the match. And I actually agree with Eric on this point, but I really dug more into the missed opportunities, but I understand the mentality. He's a former player and he doesn't like players that cheat. This is cheating. I will not condone this. I'm not going to say it's okay to do this. Mitro does it. I hate it. One of my favorite players who brought me to foam, Clint Dempsey was one of the worst divers you would ever see. For all the good that Clint Dempsey did, he was a terrible diver and he did it for foam. And don't tell me it's a good thing. It's not a good thing. I don't like to cheat to win. I don't like that. I don't like when other teams do it. I call it out. And I'm going to call it out when foam players do it. Andres Pereira has not had a good season. He's been better once Raul has been involved. I will say that. But you know what? I don't like this part of this game. I cannot condone this. I don't care who you are. There's no reason to do this. No reason to do this. This, to me, soft yellow card doesn't even describe it. It's a terrible yellow card, and it was cheating to get a player a yellow card. Sorry, but that was embarrassing, Andres Pereira. I said this on Eric's show, and I actually also talked to a phone supporter who backed me on this. He shouldn't be doing this. Some phone supporters might not like my stance on this, but this is how I feel about it. I don't like... Our own players cheating. This is cheating, and I'm going to call it out. Let's go to number two. The substitutions by Liverpool end up making the difference in the match. I think this is pretty obvious. When you have the ability to bring on Gakpo and Darwin Nunes, you can change the match, and they did, and they both were involved in the second goal, which obviously uh, – has Liverpool ahead going back to Craven Cottage, but they were really involved in creating even more chances. And thankfully, you have uh, Burn Leno and Nett who kept it two to one. But these two players were the difference. And unfortunately, 
Fulham don't have players of that level that they can have to come off the bench. Fulham have Tom Kearney and Harry Wilson. Those are good players that have come off the bench, but not game changers like these two. These two are huge game changers. So for me, that turned out to be the difference in the first leg, these substitutions. And um, like I said, Fulham do not have the amount of money to buy players like this, like like Liverpool do. But you got to give Liverpool a lot of credit because they have the ability to do this, to bring players on like this. Fulham simply do not. They, don't, they can't go that deep. They can't change the game like this. They can change it a little bit, but not like this. So, And it turned out to be the difference in the first leg. It absolutely did. That's why that's my number two. Coming up next to end the show, I'm going to share my number one takeaway from this match and my man of the match. Okay, so my number one takeaway from this match is this. Fulham still have a very good chance to get to Wembley. I truly believe this. I said before the match, if they were only down a goal, they were going to be in good shape. I said this to several Fulham supporters, so I'm not making this up. I truly believe that going into the match. So only being goal down, going back to Craven College is not the worst thing in the world. It could have been better. It could have been level, which would have been great, or Fulham being ahead coming back to Craven Cottage. But we've seen this before with many teams, including Fulham coming from behind in the Europa League against Juventus. It's possible in that second leg to make up the difference. They can make up the difference. They've proven that they can play with Liverpool. They've given Liverpool all kinds of fits. And now you're coming back to Craven Cottage. And I'm just telling you, I think that if you're a Liverpool supporter and you're just expecting an easy victory to get to the final, I think you're sorely going to be mistaken here because Fulham are very much in this and they have a very good chance to get to Wembley. It's only a goal. That's the only difference. And I actually like Fulham's chances if they get the penalties. I absolutely do. I think Fulham ha have proven that they can score on penalties. They, they've been doing it. They've worked on it a lot, you could tell, over the summer. So if we even got to that point, I, I like Fulham's chances, especially at Craven Cottage. It's a wonderful opportunity for Fulham to get to a final. It's far from over. And if anyone thinks it's over, I don't know what you watched on Wednesday night because I watched a team that gave it everything that they could at Anfield, a very difficult place to play, and there's only a goal difference in two matches at Anfield this year, Liverpool have only scored two more goals than Fulham. Think about that. Just if you watch the West Ham match against Liverpool at Anfield, they destroyed West Ham. I've seen them destroy teams at Anfield, not Fulham. And that's a full credit to the players, Marco, his staff, everyone, because they now know how to play against Liverpool. In fact, I think they've known for a very long period of time. They showed it the very first time last season in the opening match of the season. Every match against Liverpool has been difficult for Liverpool against Fulham. It's never been easy. So I listen to a lot of Liverpool supporters. I listen to all this. And let's be honest, they look at Liverpool at a different level, which probably they should. But I hope that maybe they have a little bit more respect for Fulham heading into the second leg because it's not going to be easy for them. They're just not going to cakewalk to the final. That's not going to happen. I have too much proof of that. It's not going to happen. If Liverpool are getting to the final, they're going to have to beat Fulham, and they're going to have to do it very concisely at Craven Cottage. They're going to have to really just destroy Fulham because Fulham, I think, are going to battle to the end. And I like Fulham's chances. I really do. I like their chances in the second leg. And many might disagree with me on this, but I've seen enough now against these two sides. That tells me at Craven Cottage, I like Fulham against Liverpool in the semifinal. I like Fulham in the league against Liverpool at Craven Cottage. Yes, I do. I like this matchup. I think Marco knows how to set up this team against Klopp. It's a good matchup for Fulham. I can't believe I'm saying that. But I truly believe this is fact at this point. He knows how to play against Klopp. And I look forward to to the second leg at Craven College. Okay, 
Before I go, I just want to mention who my man of the match is, and it is Anthony Robinson. I've had this back and forth with him over the years, but I want to give him credit. I thought he played very well in this match. So full credit to Anthony Robinson. I think he's worked on his game and deserves all the credit that he's getting for his play lately. Crossing's much better. He's doing great going forward, but he's also doing his defensive duties. So congratulations to Anthony Robinson. He's my man of the match. I think he could go in many places. I want to give a shout out also to Harrison Reed, who we're now learning was not feeling well going into the match. And I thought I gave it his all. So just want to mention that. Okay. Before we go, just wanted to say thank you to everyone that listens and watches College Talk. I appreciate it. And that's going to do it for this episode of College Talk, part of the Talk Sport Fan Network.